What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. <sighs> Guys, this story is very interesting as you brothers keep sending this to me. And we're talking about Houston, Texas pastor Ralph Douglas West, the second. The second means that he is the son of the first and his daddy is a very popular preacher they have the church without walls there's a very popular church boasting over 17,000 members and of course like many churches that uh you know they have these churches in which they want to leave this you know the church to their kids it's kind of like almost like a, a dictator country something like that um this they they they, they 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 do that and what ends up happening is you know they're trying to set up their son to take over their legacy well the son is ralph douglas west the second and pastor finds himself in a bind after he met somebody on facebook and passed and std i don't want to mention the name but you can it's one you can't get rid of uh on social media this is something that happened on facebook in 2018. he was preaching even then and the young lady said that after meeting up with him they had unprotected sex and she ended up you know seeing some symptoms and all of this okay now let me just talk about that because this thing, um, STD passing around, uh, is a very common, it is completely unfortunate. Um, I'm pretty sure it's very devastating to people and all of that. I get that he should be sued. Here's what I want to know. Even if he didn't have it, why is the pastor on social media clapping cheeks? How, how is it that? that the pastor now let's listen to what i'm talking about you are up here preaching every sunday your father has an organization you are not supposed to be talking about let me clap your cheeks when i'm the pastor okay i get the part where he did that was wrong but what about the, the he, he shouldn't be doing this anyway even if it's whatever he shouldn't be um, eating nothing like groceries. He shouldn't be doing nothing because you are a preacher, dummy. You were preaching back then, silly. You were preaching back then. And this is why I understand what these pastors is. You know, y'all are all here. Like, and again, you're in a city like Houston. <laughs> are you acting like anybody gonna know you, bro? <sighs> are you serious? Like, don't nobody know you? You're trying to hide it. What if the lady came out and said, okay, well, he, he, he are, he, he graped me, you know, uh, he did that. He did all of this, you know, and, and a lot of, a lot, a lot of brothers, you know, they're not really ready for it. Let me just tell you something like this, right? And I'm talking about, I'm talking about really a lot of these preachers out here. Some of these guys, and I tell this one story of what happened to, uh, uh our church, Mount Calvary Baptist church, 19, 89 1990 the infamous church fight i talk about it almost every year on my channel the pastor at that time who shall be named remain nameless but i'll give you a hint he's still there he decided that he wanted to screw an old lady in the church around the time he's around 27 28 completely destroyed that entire church all right he's a complete joke by the way he know i don't he know i don't like him he knows it so he's a joke He's one of the worst people to come out of the community. But anyway, this here, uh, his grandfather, may God rest his soul, was a, was a decent pastor. And uh, he took over the church. He came over all the way from Oakland and brought his ass to the Heights. Or, you know, he just couldn't help himself. Had a beautiful wife, beautiful family. He decides that he wants to start banging cheeks with ladies who are like in their 40s, 50s. You know, he's out here just taking down everything, right? So... That is what the pastor did. The pastor decided that he needed to clap cheeks. So in his cheek clapping, 
it was found out that he did this. The woman tried to extort him for some money, all right? Now, in the extortion of the money, he didn't want to pay it. So the woman came out there and told on his ass. So when she told on him, the deacons had to investigate. They found out that it was true. He admitted to it. He had to come before the church and admit to it. And of course, big church fight brought out, you know, the lady sat in the pastor's wife's seat. It was a big fight. They was trying to break it up. Then, you know, somebody got accidentally hit and then they will start to fight. And it was crazy. It was going around. It was ridiculous. But the question of the day was, why was the pastor sleeping with somebody in the church? And this pastor has done that multiple times, not just that once. All right. That's what we're dealing with here. Now, to have that STD and not, do, you know, do what you're supposed to do. I get all that. I get all that. The question is, you are a preacher of the gospel. How do you do that? As a pastor, a known pastor, like it's not like you're one of these guys off Tinder, you know, or something like that. No, they know you. Did you think that folks wasn't going to tell? Like, this is the thing that, you know, people got to understand when you are in church and, you know, you you have money and you come from people going to tell, bro, you can't be meeting up people on social media when you're the pastor and screwing like that. You can't do that. You got to be selective. You can't be in it. You, 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 you look stupid. So now you don't leave yourself no level of nothing. Now you're going to tell the woman that you didn't, you know, whatever. You got to pay all this money. But not only that, you destroyed your career. What church wants to be associated with the pastor? Like it's always there. Your pastor did this. And again, it's, it's you're a religious leader, a religious leader. You're a minister, a whole minister where the point was, whether you have anything or not, you shouldn't be doing that. If you are a minister, period. A lot of these guys don't have any sort of, uh, control when it comes to women, bro, you can't, you know, you're going to be in somebody like, like, like some of these preachers, but they, so they, they, so, they so disgusting like this particular reverend, this n would be in his Lexus driving around the Heights all night long, looking for booty late night, two o'clock in the morning in the Lexus. Okay. Ain't reinvest into the church church anniversary. He getting like $20,000. This n is a complete parasite. I've never seen somebody destroy an organization like this guy. And he just couldn't keep his mouth out of uh, out of somebody's crotch. He's a joke, and he, he can and he can preach his ass off. Oh my goodness, this can preach Jesus off the cross. He's a complete con artist, though. Complete. He's one of the worst. But he can preach and he can sing. Like I don't know, man. That God gives some hooping abilities to the worst Nick. Who oh, almost said they were the most jiggers. And he can preach his. He can preach Jesus off the cross. I'm telling you, if you ever thought. You're going to die in sin. If he preached your sermon going out, you might make it into the kingdom. That's how good he can preach. The n is talented. He's a crook. He's a crook. Like the old deacon say, when called by preachers, some was sent and some went. Now his ability, you think he was sent, but it seemed like he went, but he can preach his ass off. And that mean went, that mean he wasn't called by God. But the way he preached, it, 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 you, it, you, you'll think, but he'd be out there just chasing booties all day. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode of the Slavery Junk. I appreciate you for all your use. Subscribe to the bell. We're out.